Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome back to Podcastage. Today I'm back with a review of the brand new microphone from Elgato, the Wave DX. If you are interested in this microphone, it will cost you around $100. Like always, I'll throw some affiliate links in the description down below. Also, in the sake of full disclosure, I do need to let you know that Corsair sent me this microphone free of charge for the sake of making this review. And finally, for this review, I am running the microphone directly into the Focusrite 18i 22nd Gen, recording 24-bit 48 kilohertz, gain set at around 4 o'clock. I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I might have to boost it a little bit in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. And now, let's talk about what comes in the box. What a surprise, you are going to get the microphone with the arm already attached, a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter. I also noticed that you can remove the quarter inch adapter from this so you have a standard 5 8 to 3 8 inch adapter. And the reason they include that quarter inch adapter is the Elgato boom arm and their camera mounts, which I actually use, all use the quarter inch adapter, so that's why they include that. And you'll get a tiny bit of documentation. Then as far as the build quality, I have zero complaints about this thing. It has an all metal body and the grill is metal also and has no give to it. The arm is also made out of metal while the knob to tighten down the arm is made out of plastic. You are also able to switch the side that the arm is on depending on what orientation you want the microphone to be in. On the rear of the mic, you will find the XLR port. And if it matters to you, this microphone is made in China. Next, as far as the specs, this microphone has a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 50 Hz to 15 kHz, a sensitivity of around negative 52 dB, and an impedance of 600 ohms. Now I am spinning around the Wave DX to 90 degrees so you can hear the off-axis rejection and coloration. Continuing around to 180 degrees, here's the rear of the mic. Continuing around to the second 90 degree angle, here we are. And then rotating and ending at the front of the microphone. Now we are going to test the plosive rejection of this microphone. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I am right on top of the microphone to demonstrate the proximity effect, and here is how it's sounding. Now I'm about three inches off of the microphone with it pointed at the corner of my mouth, and here is how it's sounding. About one foot away from the Wave DX, about two feet away from the Wave DX, and about four feet away from the Elgato Wave DX. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the gaming folk, now I am typing on the sad W and the spacebar keys. Now here is how the microphone sounds and performs in a well-treated room. Hello, now I'm in a different room and this room is completely untreated and here is how this microphone performs in this environment. Now I want to demonstrate how well the microphone rejects shocks, so I will start by bumping on my desk to see how much of that noise it can reject. And then I will tap on the boom arm. Now to be thorough, I'm going to tap on the body of the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Now like we always do, we're going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the microphone we're reviewing and a bunch of other microphones on the market so we can see how it stacks up against the competition and hear it in the context of the market. We'll start on the microphone we're reviewing. This is the Wave DX, three inches off, gain set at four o'clock, and here is how it sounds. First up, we are on the Behringer XM8500. This goes for about $25, three inches off, gain still set at four o'clock. Check the lower third, and let's do a lot more comparisons. Back again on the Wave DX, nothing has changed. This is your palate cleanser. Let's go to another one. Now I am on the Mackie EM89D, which goes for between $50 and $70. Three inches off, gain still set at 4 o'clock, and here is how this sounds compared to the Elgato. 
Let's jump back and do a bunch more. For a third time, this is the Wave DX. Get a good feel for it, listen to how it sounds on my voice, and let's jump to another microphone. Now we are on the classic Shure SM58, which also goes for $100, three inches off, gain set at four o'clock, and here is how this compares to a microphone the exact same price. We are back again for another palette cleanser on the Wave DX. Check the lower third and let us jump to the next mic. Now we are on the SE Electronics V7, which goes for about $100, three inches off, gain still set at four o'clock, and here is how a super cardioid handheld dynamic compares to Elgato's broadcast dynamic offering. All right, we are back on the Wave DX again. Here is how it sounds. Let's hear another one. Now we are on the Rode Pod mic, which also goes for $100 and is also going for that broadcast dynamic aesthetic. Three inches off, gain set at the exact same level, and here is how this compares to the Wave DX. I bet you wouldn't guess it, but we are back on the Wave DX again. Here is how it sounds. Next microphone. Now we are on the Audio Technica AT2040, which also goes for $100 and is also going for that broadcast dynamic look. Three inches off, gain still set at the exact same level. Check the lower third to see how much I boost each of these microphones in post. Let's go back to the Wave DX and do more comparisons. Here we go again. This is the Wave DX. Same distance, same gain setting. Check the lower third to see how much I boost each of these mics in post. Let's do a lot more comparisons. Now we are on the Lewitt MTP550DM. This goes for about $130. I wanted to include this because Lewitt collaborated with Elgato on this microphone, and I wanted to offer what Lewitt does with Dynamics on their own just for a point of comparison. Same distance, same gain setting. Let's do a lot more comparisons. All right, back again on the Wave DX. I may have misspoken by saying a lot. There's four or five more. Let's hear some more. Now I am on the Shure MV7X, which goes for about $180, three inches off, gain still set at four o'clock, and here is how this compares to the Wave DX. Let's do some more comparisons. Okay, this is the Wave DX again, three inches off, gain still set at four o'clock. Let's jump to another one. All right, here we go. I am now on the Rode Procaster, which goes for about $230, three inches off, gain set at four o'clock still, and here is how Rode's proper broadcast dynamic compares to the Elgato Wave DX. Let's hear some more comparisons now. We have a few more microphones to go, but first, this is a palette cleanser on the Wave DX. Get a good feel for it, and let's jump to another mic. Now I am on the Shure SM7B, which goes for about $400. I do not have any of the EQ switches engaged. I am about three to four inches off of the capsule. I kept my gain at four o'clock. Check the lower third to see how much I boosted this because it will be a bit more. And that is how the 7B sounds compared to the Elgato Wave DX. All right, we have the penultimate microphone up next, but first, palette cleanser on the Wave DX. Here you go. Let's go to the next one. Now I am on the Electro Voice RE20, which goes for around $450. I do not have the high pass filter engaged. I am three inches off. My gain is still set at four o'clock. Make sure to check the lower third, and here is how this compares 4.5 times the price of the Elgato. Let's go to the final comparison. And you all know what the final microphone is going to be, but like always, first we have a palette cleanser on the Wave DX. Let's jump to that final microphone. And the final microphone in this comparison is the Neumann, hello Neumann, U87AI. This goes for $3,700. It's a large diaphragm condenser. It is not a fair comparison. This is a control, cardioid polar pattern. No pad, no filter, gain set at 11 o'clock, 48 volts on. And here is how this compares to a microphone that's 37 times cheaper. <laughs> Did I do that math right? That seems like a lot. 37 times cheaper. Yes. Let's go. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Let's go to the music test. <laughs>
It's Halloween again, you know what that means. Everybody's gonna die cause monsters come out in the night to eat you. If you didn't know about that, sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but it is dangerous out there for a human right now. Tread lightly. Be careful. <laughs> Let's go to the conclusion. It's no laughing matter. This is serious. Okay. When I reviewed Elgato's USB microphone, I was pretty impressed and I thought it had an amazing value for content creators. With the Wave DX, I don't think it offers that same level of a value proposition. And first up as far as pros, I found that the microphone did a pretty respectable job at plosive rejection. That's likely due to the pretty aggressive low cut filter. Also, I found that the microphone didn't get too aggressive with the proximity effect, no matter how close you got to the microphone. Again, that's likely due to the very aggressive low cut filter. And lastly, the output of this microphone is pretty respectable for a dynamic. You're likely not going to run into any issues with a preamp not having sufficient gain. And then as far as the cons, the first one for me is the lack of shock rejection. It picks up a lot of the vibrations from bumps of the desk or from bumps of the boom arm. It's pretty brutal right there. So if you're gaming and you're really aggressive and you are banging your mouse against the desk, phrasing. Leave the mice alone. <laughs> if you're picking up and dropping your mouse a lot or clickety clack and really heavy on your keyboard, that's going to be transferred into the microphone through vibrations that go up through the boom arm. And secondly, I find the microphone to sound quite lopsided, meaning it has this drastic boost in the upper frequencies while simultaneously it is cut in the lower frequencies. So you don't have anything to offset that really big boost in the treble and air, and that leads to it sounding like it is weighted towards the upper frequencies, which is never something that I am too keen on. And now what are my overall thoughts and opinions of this microphone? On the electric guitar, I was not a fan of it for that application. I think there is too much top end, not enough low end. It comes across sounding artificial, and it's just not a sound that I would be looking for for that application. But to be fair, it just wasn't designed for that use. Next on the acoustic guitar, I may be losing my mind, but that was my favorite application for this microphone. That's due to the big boost in the upper frequencies and the cut in the lower frequencies. That leads to a much more lively and exciting sound than I am used to hearing from a dynamic microphone. Now for a day-to-day -day use, I am still going to be reaching for a condenser mic for acoustic instruments, but I didn't hate it. I thought it's very workable. Next up for singing vocals, I think it almost works here. It doesn't have any unnecessary muddiness because it does have that high pass filter, which is something you typically do on singing vocals in a full mix. The mids aren't too forward, they don't come across nasally, they also don't come across too scooped, and then you get this really bright top end which just makes the vocals pop. It's really exciting sounding. It's not going to be my first pick. I prefer a tamer, a softer sounding microphone, but this can work. It's functional. I won't say it's great. It's functional for this application. And finally for spoken word, again, I think that this microphone does come across a little bit top heavy. It just doesn't offer much in terms of bass and low mids to offset the boost in the upper frequencies. And that leads to it sounding a little bit lopsided. But listening back to all of my comparisons, I think that what this microphone is trying to accomplish is offering more of a natural sound because it does sound as though you're miking yourself up from two or three feet away where you don't have much proximity effect, which is something that we have become acclimated to in an environment where we do so much close miking. I personally found that getting a little bit closer to the microphone to exaggerate the proximity effect does yield a more pleasing or an easier to listen to sound because I do think that boost in the top end without the support in the low end to offset it can be a little bit fatiguing or just a little bit unpleasant. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Elgato Wave DX for some people, but I am leaning ever so slightly towards no. I do think the microphone is fairly comparable to the other broadcast style dynamics in this price point. Compared to the Rode PodMic, it has a similar high pass filter so you don't have as much support 
as much body, but the Rode Pod mic comes across a little bit more mid-forward and a little bit more nasally and a bit darker. The AT2040 just comes across a lot more mid-forward, but the Wave DX offers a much brighter sound while also controlling the low mids to avoid any kind of muddiness, but I do think it is too bright and it doesn't have enough support. This thing made the RE20, which is a kind of bright dynamic, sound muffled. It made the U87AI, which is not the brightest condenser, but a condenser microphone sound like we were talking through a blanket. <laughs> it made a condenser sound dead and dull. So I guess if that's the sound that you're looking for in a microphone, then go for it. Just be careful around it. Don't tap your desk and for all that's holy in the world, don't tap the mic arm that it's on. And now for the reason why I said that I was slightly leaning towards no. Yes, I think the Wave DX is comparable to the other broadcast style dynamics in this budget. I think that the handheld dynamics that I compared it against sounded a bit better. So if you're willing to use a microphone that has a less flattering form factor, like a handheld dynamic, it doesn't look as cool as the Elgato Wave DX or the Rode Pod mic, and you are focused solely on the audio, I think picking up a handheld dynamic can yield better sonic results. That's it. That is my review video. If you did like this video, there's a video right underneath me that you might also enjoy. If you found the video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, big ol' thumbs down. That's it. Peace out, homies. Bye-bye. Whoop. Boop.